Well, hello, it's Paul Feuerstein, and I am finally coming out of hibernation. I'm going back to my office. And I have to tell you all, as we've all gone through this together, I think, that that first day coming in and seeing patients is quite a nervous day for all of us. Um, once we got started, as the day went on, we got more comfortable with all the PPE and everything else that was going on. And, you know, we had to have the staff meetings during the day and saying, here's, make sure we do these protocols this way and that way. And of course, we had patient education now with new protocols. And then as we were working through the day, I realized something that we've already been doing in my office for a number of years as being Mr. Technology, whatever I am. And uh, it's something that people have kind of forgotten to do. And so let me show you a little uh, short presentation of what I'm talking about here. And I'm talking about your keyboards and the mice in the rooms and all around the office. And I'm being a little dramatic saying it's a hidden danger, but maybe I'm not. So let's take a look at a few things here. Um, we're all pretty much experts about personal protection, PPE, room protection. And as we go along, you know, as we're going along right now, we're starting to do things like this. We're covering everything in sight. We're using Oh, all sorts of plastic wraps and things all over the place. And this is why it takes us so much time in between patients to go through everything. And of course, we've begun, we've all learned to love our covers and shields and everything else. And, and I have to say that I had a lot of trepidation about this shield. Uh, I thought, oh, how am I ever going to work with the thing? And, and you know, as you all know, if you started already, you put it on and you do your work and it becomes a non-issue. So I think we've all gotten used to that pretty well. But the link that I'm talking about, as I said before, is the keyboards in the office and not just in the treatment room. So in your treatment room, you're constantly going back and forth. Your hands are going from the, you know, the patient to the, to the keyboard, to the mouse. Your assistant is bringing up the schedule, bringing up x-rays, taking images. You're typing up notes. You're scheduling appointments. You're doing all sorts of things back and forth. And so as you know that you're bringing things back and forth to your keyboard, it may be covered. We'll talk about that in a second. What about the front desk in the administrative area? You have people working phones, they're working the workstations. They've never had to wear masks before. They've never worn gloves before. Um, they're they're having, handing pieces of paper to patients and pens. Some people say, well, keep the pen, don't give it back to me, or they wipe down the pens. But there's always a chance for cross-contamination in that sort of situation. And then a non-dental thing is when you're sitting at the front desk, usually sitting there with a cup of coffee next to you, or a donut and you're eating it and little crumbs get on the keyboard and you sort of shake it out a little bit. And of course, everybody's had the experience of knocking over a glass of water or the coffee right on the keyboard and you shake it out and you do whatever you can do. And um, a typical keyboard, which is not sealed, and we'll talk about sealed keyboards, the, the stuff gets underneath the keys and all of a sudden you have a sticky key and the, the letter G doesn't work. So there's some solutions that are gonna take care of that in, in addition to the sterilization and, and uh, and disinfection. And then every dentist usually has a private office where they go in between patients and they type up chart notes and look up information about things and uh, checking with specialists, administrative tasks, you get on the phone, you make some notes, you take some chart notes. So again, you're going back and forth. And even if you've taken off your gloves, it's on your clothes, it's on this, it's on that. Whether you're wearing the drapes, it's in your hair, of course, me with my hair. My haircut's coming soon. My hairdresser said that can be coming down there soon. So it, it is really an issue. And so I did some research and because it was bothering me because we've been using something, we've been using special keyboards for a long time. And sure enough, there were article after article about things that, such as this one, where your computer keyboard is five times dirtier than your toilet seat. And then there are very, very a number of hospital studies where keyboards are in hospitals in different places. They're not just in the ER, they're in the waiting areas, they're in the treatment rooms, they're in surgical areas, they're in the ICU. And there's all sorts of uh, articles about about the contamination and then 95% have microorganisms. And then studies such as this one by Neely that says there's a potential transmission of pathogens through to patients via computer hardware. And I came across this dentist, this, this, this physician, Dr. Charles Gerber from the University of Arizona, who's known as Dr. Germ. I'm not real familiar with his work, but apparently he's pretty famous. And 2004, which is over 15 years ago, he said that someone could be infected with a cold or flu and uh, the, the, the germs get on the surfaces and you can actually transmit these things from different patients, to, from, to, from patients to, to yourself or to other patients. And now about a week ago, um, in the, at the end of May, 
the CDC said that yes, indeed, the virus is not completely sent through the, the surface touching, but it is a an, an avenue. So this is, this is still relevant. So it's, it's there. So, I mean, and we're all worried about aerosols and, and this, that, and the other thing. And we get mail and we clean the mail and we get boxes from Amazon, we clean the boxes. So there's something to this. It's not the main cause, but in any case, here's what we've been doing. We're covering everything. We go get saran wrap and, and glad wrap. We cover these things. And in doing so, it's okay. You have a nice barrier, but is it a really sealed barrier? Are the, are the aerosols getting underneath these things? And then when you're taking it apart, you have to somehow peel this stuff off and put it away, throw it away, and put another thing on. And again, even the bag, the, the box of glad wrap is, is gonna be a problem. So not to mention my 60s upbringing, which horrifies me of all this medical waste and, and uh, non-biodegradable non waste that's coming out there, it's more and more and more and more. Well, we went to the sources here, I went to OSHA, I went to CDC, I went to OSAP, and sure enough, they have information about disinfecting keyboards and mice and touch surfaces, and basically you have to do a certain protocol as we all know about spray and wipe, and if you don't do that, you do not have disinfected surfaces. So, what about these keyboards? What about the mouse? What about the mice and everything else? I have an answer for you. And I'm bringing up a dear friend, Clifton Brumann, who is the big cheese, I'll have to explain that one, at the Man and Machine Company, which has been around for quite a while. So Cliff, tell us a little bit about you, who you are, and what are you the big cheese at, and what is Man and Machine? <laughs> well, first, Thank you very much for having me, and, and I'm glad that I'm now a dear friend. I mean, that's <laughs> my day at this point in time. Well, can I explain? I just want to tell people how I met you. So uh, there's, there's a dental show in Germany every couple of years. It's called the IDS show. And I'm always looking around for high-tech equipment. And I come by a booth, and there's a waterfall in this booth and an aquarium. And under the waterfall, there's a keyboard and a mouse. And I walk over, and the guy says, Try to type on that thing. I'm underwater. I'm typing underwater, and the things are coming up on the screen. I go, what is this thing? So tell me about it. <laughs> well, we've been in business uh, for 38 years. And in the last 20 years, we've been making waterproof keyboards and mice. And our focus for the first part of that time was for the hospitals. These keyboards can be used in hospitals and on ORs, ICUs, ERs. But in the last 12 years, and, and since you've met me, we've also been pushing uh, designing keyboards that can work for dental practices. And dental practices have a little bit different application than a hospital. You, you look at size of the product, you wanna be able to uh, sterilize surfaces, and since every dental practice has its autoclave, we were designing product and trying to figure out products that can be used uh, by the dentist and sterilized after their use or at the end of every day. And then additionally, keyboards that can be used in reception areas, that can be used in laboratories, that are totally sealed, and ones that are waterproof and can be disinfected and cleaned between each patient to protect the dentist, to protect the staff, and the patients, so everybody is protected. So these keyboards are waterproof. They can be sprayed white, sprayed as OSAP requires or recommends. And we've been working many times with dentists, but it's only now that dentists have really become sensitized because of COVID that they need to be able to wash, disinfect the keyboards since, as you were saying, they are using these keyboards in their practice and need to be able to manage it. So we've been working and designing keyboards that, are, that have the ability to be disinfected and cleaned. So the keyboard is washable. So you're, you basically have a washable keyboard and then we've added a fitted drape that allows it to be one wipe clean for pretty much all of our solutions. And the nice thing about these drapes is that they're green, clean, and no waste. You can sterilize this over and over again, but at the same point in time, you don't have to throw it away. 
And so you're minimizing the waste that you would normally see with the existing barriers that you have. And you can autoclave them at 134 degrees C. So you can sterilize this between each use. It's very easy to type on. And this is one of the things that are important that people are talking about all the time is we need a keyboard that we can type on easily and feel unlike the glass keyboards that some of you might have seen. So we have drapes, we have mouse pads. These all can be sterilized in an autoclave. And as we move forward, what we're doing is we've been talking about different solutions because people want different sizes. They want a keyboard that can be used in an operatory where there's a small amount of space. We have ones for your rooms or bigger operatories, as well as we have keyboards, which you will see a short while, that can be for um, uh, the that can be used in the reception area. And we also have them available in wired and wireless, both the keyboard and the mouse. Therefore, a lot of dentists don't want the wires. We have that available so that they can use the keyboard in a variety of different applications in that situation, wired or wireless. So let me explain to everybody about these that we've been using these for quite a while since I've met you actually at, at IDS. Um, Cliff said to me, these are indestructible. I shouldn't say indestructible, but you can try every solution you have in the office except for hydrochloric acid maybe and see what you can do. So we have worked as hard as we can to break these things. We did not put them in the dishwasher. Thank, I, thanks for telling me I couldn't do that. We didn't put them in the autoclave of the keyboards themselves, but certainly the covers. We run them in the autoclave and they come back, they, you can still see the keys on them. Some of the, some of the covers I've seen before are clear, and after a while they don't, they're not as clear when you clean them. These have the, the, uh, um, the, the printing on them, so you actually see the, key, the keys on, on the uh, little drapes and things like that. Everything's working very, very well. Um, so we've really tried hard. We've, we've scrubbed them, we've put them under water, we've, we've, we've done everything we could. We actually drowned one completely and said, oh, we finally broke it, and we shook it out. And uh, I mean, we really killed this thing, Cliff. And but the next day it worked again. So <laughs> they were actually we found there were little holes where the water drips out from, which we didn't know. And then uh, so, but one of the things that that's, that we found initially was that as we were wiping them down, if the keyboard was on and the computer was on, the, the letters and numbers were flying all over the place. So so you told me about something which I didn't know was called True Lock. So tell me about True Lock for a second. So <laughs> on our keyboards, or most of the keyboards we have because you don't want to get, when you're cleaning it, you don't want to get spurious char characters on the display or on the computer. You actually can lock these keyboards. Normally it's a function key and a, uh, a function key in like an F11 and it locks the keyboard. So you can press it and it locks. You can clean it as well as you want with whatever wipe or disinfecting solution that you have. And then when you're done, you press the, the two keys again, and it unlocks the keyboard, and you go ahead and start using it. And it, it makes the cleaning process much easier. Yeah, I mean, really, you've pretty much thought of everything. You have an array. I mean, you have an array. It's, I mean, I don't think we have room on the screen to show everything. I, I crammed them in as many as I could get in there. And, and you have nice names for each thing, too, you know? Um, you have the cool keyboard, the it's cool keyboard, the very cool keyboard. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's, 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 it's kind of nice. And also the, the drapes, you can see a picture of the drapes in the middle there. They actually comes in different colors too, but if you look at it, they're, they're, they're embossed with the, uh, with the letters and the numbers on it. So they go right over the keys exactly as they're supposed to go. Um, it's, been, it's been a great thing. So I, as I said, we've been using this for quite a while and uh, really never gave it much thought until now, all of a sudden it's relevant. And it's not just the, the touching, we're all being bombarded with stories about aerosols, aerosols, aerosols. And so of course, even if you don't touch the keyboard, it's still in that same room and you still have to go and wipe these things down. So, so it's been, you know, I think it's a critical piece of equipment in the office. Um, do me a favor though, Cliff. Yes. I, I'm a big fan of this product and can we do something for people who are watching this video? <laughs> well, just because of your helping us and showing this product, anybody who calls us and says, 
I heard about you from the Tooth Fairy, gets an automatic 10% discount on anything they buy. Because our goal is to be able to help dentists. Look, we, everybody understands and is now sensitized to the issues of being able to disinfect surfaces properly. And you've been involved in this before COVID. Way before. And, yes. And you're, you've been telling and preaching to people, this is what needs to be done. And now I think everybody's caught up to what you've been saying online and at trade shows that I've seen. And it's, it's kind of funny. There's a few products that have come up over the years and people just said they shrug their shoulders and all of a sudden now there's a brand new relevance to all these things because of, oh, it's not one well, of those aha moments. So, uh, so, so tell us about uh, contacting you the best Like, I mean, you have your phone number down at the bottom here in the U S and you're international, it's an international company. Um, so you have the phone number there, 301-341-4900. Um, the website is uh, man-machine.com. There's a lot of information on that too. When you go onto the site, what I found is there's, a, there's actually a special area of it for dental keyboards. So there's other industrial things that are on there, but um, you know, it's, it's your choice. A lot of information. The, um, so just how, how do people, what should people do if they want to order these things? Well, what we suggest is because we know the product and we've been showing it to dentists for a while that if you call us, we can walk you through it. You certainly can order online on our website, but we have sample packs available so that you can try different ones. And if you don't like what you, one of the keyboards or two of them, you can return it back to us wow. and, and then order what you need. We, we also have different products we can talk to you about. Like for example, we make these drapes that are made out of silicone and also can be sterilized. And we can show you what the drape can do. We can provide you, again, samples so that you can try one. It's, we're going to give you a taste of the candy. I think you'll like it afterwards. But the best part is just to give us a call, 301-341-4900. And we will be more than delighted to help you and more than delighted to work with you so that it minimizes infections between you, your staff, and your patients. And, and as most of you know, I'm very accessible too. So if you have specific questions that you would rather ask me than ask Cliff, that's not a problem for me because it's something we're using in the office. Uh, we, we, as I said, we try our best to ruin them and we can't do it. Uh, they work fantastically. Uh, when I got one, like, the problem was that I got one for my treatment room, the two hygienists came running over to me, where's ours? <laughs> so, so now we have a whole bunch of them on the office and the front desk said, Hey, those are pretty cool, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, <laughs> actually, they're very cool. <laughs> very cool. That's right. We have to be stay within the branding. Yes. So, uh, and as you know, my my email is the, is drpola230.com. And Cliff, I can't say thank you enough for everything you've taught me over the years, and uh, for this great product. And and I think everybody needs to see this and learn more about it and get in touch with both of us, and uh, just get them. Just get them. You need them. <laughs> 